Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. It's been a while, I'm glad to be back here in the saddle. Today's talk's gonna be on pre and post workout nutrition, as well as how to combine that with your exercise optimally. And again, this is a little abbreviation from a podcast I did recently with Dr. Tom Bellello. So feel free and head over to Beyond Wellness Radio and make sure you check, check out our podcast coming up, especially our podcast by Dr. Tom. Again, I'm going to give you some highlights of what the most optimal pre and post workout nutrition, some of the things that I do currently in my health routine. All right, so let's dig in. So off the bat, we have our pre-workout. Pre-workout, this is the half hour window before the workout where you're getting your nutrition dialed in. Now there's a couple different scenarios. There are people who are overweight and they're trying to optimize fat burning. And there are people that maybe are already at a really good weight and they're trying to optimize muscle mass and hypertrophy. So a couple different scenarios. Off the bat, about, eh, about 10 to 20 grams of protein is okay pre-workout. Again, regarding carbohydrate, up to about 20 grams or so pre-workout can be beneficial. If you're going for performance, CrossFit, uh, definitely some more heavy intense Olympic lifts or more compounded movements like squats and lunges and deadlifts, maybe a little bit of carbohydrate up to 20 grams before. You can go between 10 and 20 grams of protein before workout. Generation UCAN, it's actually U-C-A-N, Generation UCAN, it's a, it's a very slow burning carbohydrate that won't have any insulin spikes. So if you have insulin resistant issues, this is a great slow burning carbohydrate. Uh, again, four to six grams of branch chain aminos can be used during. Again, we'll come to that in one second. So regarding the pre-workout, the carbohydrates I consider to be negligible. And again, it depends what time of the day, right? If we're doing a workout first thing in the morning and your goal really is fat loss, as long as you're keeping your workouts down to about 30 minutes, I'm fine doing just amino acids in the morning for breakfast. I'm totally fine with that. Again, we're trying to optimize fat burning. Let's say there's a little bit of insulin resistance happen, happening. Your cells are numb to insulin, so you're becoming a fat storing machine and not a fat burning machine. We really want to lower those insulin levels. So restricting carbohydrate can be a great uh, opportunity for that. Also, the whole role of building muscle and increasing muscle synthesis is to help with insulin sensitivity. Your muscle is your natural sponge for glucose in the bloodstream. So the more that sponge is wrung out, you can soak up more glucose in the bloodstream. So that wrung out sponge is like contracting your muscle, right? You contract your muscles, that's gonna wring that sponge out, that's gonna allow you to sop up that glucose in the bloodstream. Less glucose sitting out in the bloodstream, the less your liver and your pancreas have to work to um, buffer that blood sugar swing. So pre and post workout, up to 10 to 20 grams. Branch chain amino acids can be used during your workout. All right, they can be used during. Up to about, yeah, about four to six grams during is perfect. What are branch chain amino acids? I love leucine. Leucine about two grams, and then you have about a gram, gram and a half or so of the valine. And um, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. So these are the major branch chain amino acids. Leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And again, these amino acids are special because they can go right to your muscle and they can be utilized for fuel right away. Most amino acids actually have to go to your liver. They have to go through a process known as gluconeogenesis. Gluco meaning blood glucose, neo meaning new, genesis meaning new glucose forming. So it has to get formed from glucose and then go back out, spit out to the liver into general circulation. Now you have glucose to burn. So you're not actually burning fuel, burning the protein, you're actually burning the buffer byproducts of the glucose from the protein. So what does that mean? Branch chain amino acids help keep our body anabolic, putting on muscle because our muscles can utilize those amino acids, the leucine, isoleucine, and valine right away. It doesn't have to go through the whole entire liver gluconeogenesis pathway, gluconeogenesis pathway. So four to six grams of BCAAs. Again, I have one that I formulated. A lot of BCAAs have Splenda, or aspartame in it, because if you try BCAAs, branch chain amino acids, without a sweetener in there, they are nasty, really bad. So branch chain amino acid synergy is a great one. I'll put the link in the annotation so you can access it. One to two scoops should be enough, and it's sweetened with stevia, no artificial flavors. It's the one that I use myself personally. Next, post-workout nutrition. Well, let's skip this. Let's skip number two. Let's go into the exercises. So we're going pre-workout and then we'll go post-workout. So the exercises, what are we doing? Well, really simply, we're gonna be doing 
compound functional movements. We're going to be doing squats, bending movements. We're going to be doing deadlifts. We're going to be doing, you know, sitting and bending movements, squats and deadlifts. We're going to be doing a lunging, right? One leg type of movement. So we have a lot of lower body, single leg bending, single leg squatting, or should say double leg bending, double leg squatting. And we have single leg movements with a lunge. Now we have push movements that can be pressing bench press, push-ups, incline, decline, cables, free weights from all the different angles. We have pullings that could be a row movement. It could be a, a straight row. It could be a dead bell, a dumbbell row, or a, a barbell row from a, a decline angle. It could be a lat pull down where your palms are facing away or a chin up where your palms are facing to you. It could be presses, military press right in front and obviously single, this isn't a compound movement, but you have barbell curls as well as dumbbell curls. So you have pulling in this plane, pushing in this plane and all of the individual angles. So we have bending, squatting, lunging, we have pushing and pulling movements. Now we have rotating or twisting movements. This could be a punching bag. This could be a cable pull from high to low or from low to high or from straight across. Medicine balls against the wall, high to low cables, low to high cables. So we have, then we have um, the lunging, we have the gait, or we have the sprints. So we have high interval training after that. So we could be Tabata type of training on a rower. It could be plyometric sprints, explosive movements. It could even be just interval sprints uh, out in your backyard or even using a bike or an elliptical. High intensity, as fast as you can go, relaxation, rest and relax. So again, those are your kind of seven to eight primal movements. Squatting, bending, lunging, pushing, pulling, twisting, and then sprinting, gait, interval or walking. So that kind of gives you, that's an a la Palchek primal movement pattern type of exercise that you can incorporate to your program. Now post-workout, what do we do? Typically about two to one carbohydrate. And again, that depends, right? Like myself, I keep it closer to one to one. So I may throw a little bit of fruit in a shake and I may do a really good shake with 30 grams of protein, 30 grams of carbs. If you're leaner and you're doing a lot of intense workout, eh, you may want to throw up your carbs a little higher and go to that two to one ratio. If you're more like doing a lot of biking and such and a lot more uh, aerobic type of movement, maybe up to four to one. But I typically oscillate between two to one to one to one. Ideally one to one, because I'm more on the side of being insulin resistant. But carbs are super helpful because carbohydrates post-workout increase insulin, which is good because if our stress hormones are high like cortisol, insulin can actually help buffer that high levels of cortisol. And it can also help improve growth hormone levels post-workout because insulin and growth hormone work together, right? Growth hormone and insulin-like growth factor kind of potentiate each other. So growth hormone kind of goes to the liver and gets activated via IGF-1. And that has a lot of effects on building muscle. A lot of good things. Why is muscle good? Makes you more insulin sensitive in the long run. In the short run, obviously the workout you're gonna be a little bit more insulin resistant, obviously for good reasons, because you're trying to get muscle and get the glucose and the sugar to the muscles to work out. So other parts of the body may be more insulin resistant, makes sense. But overall, we're trying to make your body more insulin sensitive globally. The better you burn sugar for fuel, the more you're gonna burn fat throughout the day steadily as your primary fuel source. So outside of that, we went over all the exercise. Again, what are things you can do on top of that? Electrolytes and glucose during the workout can be super helpful. Anywhere up to 20 grams of glucose during the workout. You could even throw some branch chain aminos instead of doing it pre. You could even do it during as well. And then 10 grams of creatine. Creatine is phenomenal because it helps increase growth hormone levels. I like a cre-alkaline creatine. Creatine also helps drive in muscle or drive in um, fluid and hydration into the muscle. So muscles start to swell, become a little bigger, and that hydration helps blunt a catabolic physiology. It helps blunt your muscle being broken down faster. So it helps put on more muscle. And that first six seconds of an exercise movement is primarily going to be the phosphocreatine pathways. So that's the first six seconds. So if you're doing a really explosive movement for performance or for trying to PR, a personal record, having good creatine in there up to 10 grams can be super helpful for optimal muscle contraction. Again, figure out where you're at, right? You have, kind of have people that are getting into the exercise of it. Just where is exercise? 
have a good post-workout shake and a good pre-workout meal, you're fine. Uh, if you want to get fine-tune it, add in some BCAAs, add some creatine, dial in your pre and post-workout, add some branched chain amino acids during the workout, add some electrolytes if you want to, fine-tune your carbohydrate. If you're leaner, play around more with the carbs. If you're more heavier or on the insulin resistance side, lower your carbohydrates. Figure out what your goals are. Is it more performance? Is it just to look better naked? Is it just overall health? Figure out where you're at. Maybe it's a combination of all three. Figure out where you're at. I hope these tips really helped. Again, for more great information coming your way, click on screen and subscribe. Click below if you're struggling with your health, with your hormones, with your digestion, and you're not quite sure what the next steps are, click below and schedule a consult with myself, Dr. J. Again, more great videos coming your way. Thanks. Have a great night.